Okay. All right. So to everyone in Zoom land, I'm Fauna Farrell from America's Preferred Home Warranty. And I think I know almost everybody in this room except for you. I'm Eva, the new MCA. Oh, Eva, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm glad to be here. And I don't think I know you. This is Keith Allen. He's on the Moonstone team. Okay, awesome. Awesome. <laughs> and I've met I've met both of you, but I don't remember your Allie. name. Allie. Okay. Allie. I'll never forget. <laughs> and you I'm do commercial, right? You do commercial <laughs> stuff? Okay. Um Deanna, she's coming back. Yeah, she's she's coming back. Who has left that I need to know about? Because I know there's some change. Anybody else? Doug. Doug's a good option because he is our new interim TL and he'll be going, you know, okay. girls for a newbies that don't know how okay. to use. Okay. So yeah, talk to him. All right, so America's Preferred Home Warranty, we announced in July, we are now a platinum partner for Keller Williams. I'm not sure if you guys know that. So we are their preferred home warranty company. Um, we were at Family Reunion. I don't know if any of you guys were there. Mm -hmm. You guys were there? Yeah. Oh, yes. All right. Did you happen to see our, our crew there? Sorry. Did you? Yeah. Awesome. So our owners were there. Um, we actually are a family-owned company. We're privately held. Um, Randy Cartwrighter is our owner of the company, and he was there along with some other people. Um, I didn't get to go, but I wanted to. Um, so anyway, so the partnership started in, in about July. It was a long time in the making, but really what that means to you guys, obviously I'm always your partner. I look at myself as a partner, not a vendor, but this gives you the ability to, when you're promoting yourself and you're promoting our product, we're branded now Keller Williams. So on all the stuff that we have, it's Keller Williams approved on the bottom. We have the um, table tents. We have flyers you can give to your clients. The home buyer, home seller sheets just gives like a little rundown. Um, of the benefits of it. And you can put those in your listing folders or in your packet that you give to your buyers at closing. But all that stuff's free to you. You can buy it, you can um, order it online or you can let me know what you need and I can help you order it. But um, we're gonna get into today a couple things. The main thing is what you brought up, which is you know the, the current market conditions when it comes to how, how are you gonna put a home warranty in the way that things are now. Um, and the other thing I wanna cover with you guys is um, how to order the warranty, how to do data collection. So I know the data collection um, has been a sticking point for some agents. They just find it difficult to do or don't know how to do it. I don't know what the problem is. We're going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out. Crazy. It's, it's free money, right? Yeah. So you get $50 for every warranty that you order and you get paid through the brokerage. Um, with all the changes going on, I have to make sure that I get that all kind of caught up because I don't want your money to get held up because of that. It's your gal. So we'll have to make sure that, that all the, the legal names get updated. Okay. So once you get, we just have the updated W nine. Okay. And, and and I did change the name already for you guys. Um, are you guys moving? Yes. yes. Yep. When do you guys know? Down by the AAA building. Sometime in twenty twenty two. Sure. They're okay. building it out now. I hear. You know where that Sola is? That oh, salon. Yeah. 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 Okay. Well, it was at yeah. it. When did you say you might come? I'm hoping so, but she said late summer fall. I don't know. I'm not sure. No, I'm sorry. The last update was June. I apologize. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, um, so I'm going to do just a broad overview because a lot of you already know about the warranty. Um, you probably don't know a lot about the warranty. Not a whole lot. The biggest thing to know about America's Preferred is we allow you to choose your own licensed contractor. So we're not your typical home warranty company. We don't have a network of contractors that we dispatch out to the homes. The homeowner picks whoever they want to work with. They set up their own appointments. We basically just pay the bill. Um, another thing I'm going to tell you is I'm, I don't want to sit here and, and preach to you about toilet coverage. I just want to tell you that all home warranties basically cover around the same thing. Some may be more here, some may be more there. But at the end of the day, this is a partnership that we're in. I'm your person. You guys know that. If you need me, I take care of you. Um, our corporate office is very helpful. Our 800 number answers within seconds. I don't know if anybody's ever called the 800 number, but it's, we answer within seconds. Um, so we have just a team of people that are that have your back. That's the main thing you need to know. Choose your own contractor. I'm your person. And then the warranty is going to give that peace of mind to your sellers and to your buyers. Now, we talk about current market conditions that people are leaving the home warranty out. We were finding that. But in our statistics were showing that people were having shoppers remorse because they're over they're overpaying, they're waiving inspections, and then they're not getting a home warranty. It's ludicrous. It's it's silly. So as an agent, my job to, to train you guys and educate you guys is the aftermath, right? So your business is based on referrals. You want to make sure you're protecting that referral. So you need to educate your clients of what they what their needs are. And home warranty isn't need. 
because if not, you become the home warranty. You know, six months after they bought their house, they're now moved in and they have a plumbing issue or a furnace issue or whatever the case may be, and they have no warranty, they're going to be upset. They're going to, the, the blame's going to go somewhere, but it's, not going to be, but it's not going to be on themselves, right? So we don't want them to blame you. So your job when you're working with a buyer is to really advocate for them to get the warranty, whether they pay for it, you pay for it, mom and dad, I don't care who pays okay. for it, but a buyer needs a warranty when they walk away from the closing table. Okay. Um, on the listing side, when you're doing a listing appointment, always put the warranty on the listing side because it's a no brainer and it's super easy. Number one, put it in the sales price. So build it right into the price. That's what you tell your, your sellers. Let's list your house with a warranty because here's why. Number one, it's gonna sell faster for more money. Number two, you're going to be asked for one most of the time anyway. Number three, if you put the warranty on, you get coverage through inspection. So if something comes back on inspections, you have a warranty to protect yourself. And then once the property closes, it transfers over to the buyer. So it really is a no brainer. It also puts, um, for me, the way I like to explain it is, it tells your potential buyer that you're confident in what you're selling. You know, I'm selling you my home, but I'm also giving you a warranty to protect you when you walk away. So if there's anything that does go wrong, we have you covered. We gave you the peace of mind. And then your referral is protected. And then the homeowner also has that peace of mind and they're not gonna come after them, right? Um, for the listing coverage on the very back of the booklet, down here, you, when you do a listing warranty, you order a listing warranty, you get basic coverage. It's just basic stuff. I really recommend the upgrade. It's 75 bucks, not due till closing, but that's going to cover your heating and cooling and your appliances. So if you have concerns about those, like maybe their order, um, you want to put the warranty on and have that $75 paid at closing, but then they have that protection through their, their close or through their inspection. How much time do you have before... I mean, in other words, does it have to be on for like a week or two weeks or something? I'd say you, know, you have a listing to put it out and right away you get an offer. How soon do you have to have it? You do want to, that's a great question. So the question is, how quickly do we put the warranty on the listing? You want to put it on right away, but say you forget. As long as you get the warranty on before you go under contract with a buyer, so before, you'll be, yeah. Before you go under contract. Yeah, you want to make sure you have the at the listing warranty active before you go under contract with a buyer. And how long does it take to, to activate? Uh, instantly. You literally okay. go onto the website. So let's talk about that. So how do we order the warranty? So you're either going to order a listing warranty or closing warranty. Listing warranty is the scenario you're giving, which is where someone's going to list their house for sale with a warranty. Um, so you go onto our website, APHW.com. At the top, you click on for real estate professional, and then you're going to log into our portal that's called Real Pro. If you're not already um, logged in, if you don't already have an account, you'll just register yourself. But once you do, you'll log in, and then you'll hit new warranty, warranty type listing or closing, and then you put the information in. And then as soon as you hit save, it's going to say uh, processing, and then you instantly, your invoice appears. So now you have your invoice. So now your warranty is active. Now you have listing coverage. So, so from, my, so my from sellers that- sellers don't have to pay anything until close. Right, so if the house doesn't sell, they don't owe anything. If the, if you have to do an extension, like say the, you do a six, what's the average that you guys do for a listing? Three months, six months, what is it? A year. Well, every list is not just for a year. So say after a year, you didn't sell the house, you still can have the warranty. There's no expiration for the listing warranty. You don't have to do a relisting fee if you relist, none of that kind of stuff. Um, so that's the scenario for the listing side. For the buyer side, you go back in. Again, you log into Real Pro, order closing warranty, put the buyer's information in, hit save. Now you have your invoice. Now, Deanna, the, the, she's, she's been a bad girl. She doesn't do her data collection. So she hasn't been getting her, her shoe money, I call it. So when you do the order, when you do the list or when you do the closing warranty, and you order, you now have your invoice. There's one next step to get your money. It's called data collection. It's on the right, it's a red tab, you click it, you'll do home fax, which is where you check, does it have an air conditioner, does it have a microwave, et cetera. You check the boxes, boom, 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 hit save, you're done. Once the property closes and it's paid for, the warranty's paid for, we turn around and send a check to the brokerage and the brokerage gives you a check. So when you're ordering that warranty, just do it right then and there so you don't forget. But is it on your, like, you know, the models? We don't do that anymore. Oh, you didn't tell me that. So, <laughs> so, so there's two forms. There's the regular one where you do the brands, and then there's home facts. If you click on home facts, you only have to click check the boxes of what it has. Does it have a microwave? Does it have a dishwasher, et cetera? That's all you have to do and hit save. So for you, moving forward, 
I want you to just try to do the home facts one and see how easy it is. And then let me know what you think. Cause I think you're like, oh my gosh, this is great. And then you won't miss any after that. If you've missed some in the past, you can always reach out to me. I can help you get paid on them. You just have to do it by paper. Once you've missed the window, then the window I think is um, you have up to 30 days after closing to do that data collection online. So I missed the beginning of that, but if I go online and I order and go prompt me and I'll be good. Yes. Click the red button. Yep. Home fact. Yes. And when you said I should do well, when I asked you the minimum and you said 425, it didn't include the $75 upgrade. Right. You should buy that for those right. hours. Yes. But okay. I don't go online and do it. How do you go online? I don't go online. Oh, you. Uh -huh. Huh? Huh? Did you ask the end of that question? Yeah. <laughs> you so you don't do so you call it in? She calls it in. I like calling it in too. She calls it See? I, I well then if you're gonna be old school, then you're gonna get paper. Wait, so you gotta old? fill out the paper. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta fill out the paper then. Do the paper, Michael. No, no, a lot of times I just call in and somebody helps me. And that's fine. You can do the order on, over the phone. No, no worries. It's just the data collection has to be done online or you have to do the paper version. I can email you the paper version and I will remember to send you one. Um, I'll try. I don't know if I have your email. If not, email me. I'll send it to you too. And then just save it. Keep the, keep the form in your folder. And that way, anytime you have a warranty that you sold, you can print that off, fill it out and scan it in or email it in. And, and then on that form, it tells you at the top who to send it to. Okay. Obviously, if you don't remember, send it to me. But so, just to confirm, nothing gets paid by you. It gets paid by, by the warranty by the seller or whoever has the warranty for the repair, and then you reimburse them. Is that how it works? Yes, we can do it that way. Unless the contractor will take payment over the phone, we can actually pay a contractor with a credit card, company credit card over the phone. Oh. So if you have that, some some do, some don't. If they don't, then obviously the homeowner pays. We reimburse them with up in up to fourteen days after they've paid in full. Okay. So they, they will do that. So yes. If there's a repair, you'll, as long as they take credit cards. Yes, we can pay right over the phone. So if it's important to your homeowner, say they don't have a lot of money to pay for repairs, and since they can choose their own contractor, maybe they would call a contractor and say to them, "Hey, will you take a credit card over the phone?" And if they say yes, then that maybe that's going to be their person they want to pick. What kind of things can they cover? Can it cover roof leaks? Yes, we do roof leaks. So I like to use the acronym PEACH for home warranty. So plumbing, electric, appliances, cooling, and heating. That's what a home warranty is for. Um, if what you want again? plumbing, peak, electric, appliances, cooling, and heating, right. PEACH. Right, right, right. All right, so if you turn to page three, this gives you a summary of what we cover, what we don't cover. We actually bold what we don't cover. You're a real estate agent. You're not expected to know all this stuff. All you, all we expect you to do is present it. If you present the warranty, we feel like the client's going to take it. If they don't, as long as you haven't signed the waiver, I don't know if you guys know this part, but listen up. If you haven't signed the waiver, we pay your E and O deductible up to seventy five percent if you're ever being sued in a lawsuit. Do you guys know that? We That's know. why they asked for it in our compliance. Yes. Yes. So we. So remember, I told you I have your back. Yes. I really do. <laughs> so if, they, if you sell the warranty, great, you have you know, coverage. If you don't sell the warranty and you haven't signed the waiver that you at least presented it, we still give you that. We'll pay up to $3,750 for you. I don't know what the deductible is, but I'm sure that would be a nice dent. I think it's well, like you shouldn't be doing anything where you need your ENO anyway. But I'm pretty so. sure the deductible is 1500 <laughs> Yes, get the waiver signed. And you, you need to present a warranty anyway. Okay. Right. But here this just tells you, like I said, we bold, but we don't cover very transparent. If they want to know, okay, limitations, because every home warranty has limitations. Ours start on page five. Yes, limitations of coverage. So on page five through six and seven, it tells you like the max limits. What I'm going to tell you about the max limits, if you ever have a client call you and say, hey, America's preferred, they're only approving X amount of dollars for my furnace, and they're upset. And it's one of your clients and you want to make them happy, please call me. Let me know what's going on. I have the ability to write concessions and get you guys more money if you need. Um, but I don't know to help you unless you let me know. So even though we have limitations, I still have the ability to help you with concessions if you guys need it. Okay. So it's not ironed out. Questions? I have a question. 
One of the warm teas that I used for years was because we have so many bad flippers in this town. And a lot of the coverage I was finding after closing with a different warranty company, they wouldn't cover repairs that were done incorrectly or installation and incorrect installation. Mm -hmm. So there was a buyer upgrade that you could get that would cover those things. Mm -hmm. If say either a DIY or somebody put some sort of janky something on yeah. their sink. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about the coverage for, you know, if a, if that um, contractor comes in and says, this, just this wasn't is done improperly. installed yeah. correctly. So we do the same thing, unfortunately. Yeah. If it's installed improperly, we cannot, it cannot be used with a warranty. Okay. Because it's a liability on us. Sure. So what, what happens is <clears throat> if you're in that scenario, if you call me, I will find out what I can do to get you some dollars to help. Okay. Because I have done that. Okay. So even though it's denied, you yeah. have the right to deny it. I also am able to still come in and help you out. Okay. Um, especially Keller Williams, because of the partnership, I have more pool. Okay. Okay. Um, pre-existing conditions. Nobody covers pre-existing conditions. I hate when warranties say they do because they really don't. Um, the home has to volunteer. I mean, this just yeah. make me think like, yeah, what are you trying to do, right? Yeah. Okay, so if it has to be in working order, it has to be um, normal wear and tear. So whatever the repair needs to be a replacement has to be from normal wear and tear. It can't be, you know, I'll give you an example. Um, I had a different home warranty on my second home that I bought. Not that I have two homes, meaning I bought a home, sold it, and had a second home. I'm not that fancy. <laughs> um, so I, I, I moved into my house. I have a plumbing issue. It backs up my basement floods. I do have a home warranty, but I forget because I'm young and I don't know any better. I have a home warranty, but I didn't know to use it. So the first time I went and used somebody that I knew, had them come out, I paid $300 or whatever to get it fixed. Well, a couple of days later, the plumbing backed up again. So at this point, I ended up talking to my real estate agent what was going on. She said, oh, you should use the warranty. So I called the warranty company. They send somebody out to my house. Um, the guy doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't have the right equipment. So he can't even help me. This is who the home warranty company said. So now he wasted a whole day of not being able to get it repaired. So I said, well, I know the owner of um, the plumbing place down the street. And I can't remember the name of it right now because it's been so long, but I knew the owner and I knew his wife. Can I use the people I know? So they gave me permission to use them. And because I knew them when they came out to look at my plumbing, there was a metal rod that was shoved down into the plumbing out like through the front yard. So in the plumbing system or in the um, in the piping, there was a metal rod in there. That's not normal wear and tear. But because I knew the contractor, he put in there, he put something else so he knew it would be covered for me. And then I obviously got it covered. So this goes back to knowing your contractor and being able to have someone work for you that you know and trust because they're gonna be able to help you with some of those claims. And that was a great example of him being able to help me get that covered. Um, but that wasn't normal wear and tear. A lot of normal thing too, that that will cover something exterior, like sewer lines or whatever, it'll cover if there's a backup or something and they get sick at one side, but they won't cover a lot of lines like you know, from the exterior of the house on a lot of warranties don't come up. Right, you know, but line coverage for that. But <clears throat> well, you're so spot on about using contractors that you know this is outside of a warranty, but I'll just share it quickly. I mean, the roof. And so, thankfully, when my husband bought homeowners, he elected hail damage coverage. Yeah. Now, we didn't know to do that. We just got lucky. We had a friend that was a roofer. And the roof had hail damage coverage. He got up on the roof with the insurance guy. We pointed it out to him. The insurance company for the roof. It was unbelievable. It's yeah. better to work with people that you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now let's talk about that. So, if you're working with a contractor that you already know, and you are giving him business, don't you think he's going to think to give you business? Yes. So what do we talk to the market team? Yeah. So we always talk about like, what do you guys say? Like your, your team, your network of people, your, your spirit. Yeah. Yeah. You need to have people in there that you can trust and that, you know, that you guys can share business and leads referrals. Um, so it all goes hand in hand. Um, that's why we really put a lot of emphasis on choose your own contractor. Do you guys have any questions? Anything happened over the last couple of months that maybe a scenario you want to run by me? Tears. I have a meeting today at five o'clock for the buyer that closed last summer. <clears throat> it was a flip. Sold by an agent in his office and um, found out like it wasn't found in the inspection or anything. She waived warranty. It wasn't this one, it was another one. Anyway, 
um, and found that the ductwork doesn't even go to the upper bedrooms. Oh, the wow. ductwork was removed. Somebody did some work up in the attic. It was cut off, and her heat was going into her neighbor's. It's an attached, semi-detached, mm. um, and it was going into. So she wants to meet today to discuss the legal action yeah. against the seller yeah. and all this other stuff. And it's just, um, it's unnerving. And I also feel like too, it's difficult because home inspections cannot catch everything. Yeah, you know, look inside the wall. You, you know, know they, the they do. Is there. They will look right. in the attic, and right. he did, but that just was not noticed. Yeah. So you know, I tend to err on the side of like call that, that home inspector, explain what they missed. You know, that is that something that they should have caught? I've had my my preferred home inspector re. Reimburse the whole cost of an inspection because I send him so much business. Yeah, right. yeah. I said as long as you're kind yeah. and just say, "Look, yeah. I'm upset," um, and this maybe should have been caught. He agreed or yeah. whatever. So I don't know. I just feel like, like you said, there's always that call a week, two months, whatever after a closing, and you're just like, oh. "Yeah." They were happy at the closing table, and now it's just like this hornet's nest. Yeah. 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 You don't want to jeopardize your referral. Not that your scenario was that, but you have to make sure you, you go over everything. Yeah. Everything. Oh, and your suggestion on building the purchase price on the listing. Yes. Is brilliant. Thank you. And yeah. I'm embarrassed. I never thought of that before. And on the buyer side, you know, we're having such a hard time getting the deal, you know, and like, for example, I had, um, this couple was moving in from Philly and we've lost three now. And on this last one, they took off all the contingencies. They even wanted to remove the mortgage contingency by getting their approval all the way through. But um, they wouldn't go for this price yeah, because they didn't want to spend the money. But um, and of course, somebody else went higher on the price. But I can't. I, I, I can't take the home warranty off the sales agreement. So you how the multi-offer situation? So yeah. you know what you need to do. You just need to tell the buyer, hey, listen, you need this. So you just gotta buy it. Yeah, that's what I do. You yeah. need this, and here's why. You need it because you don't know what's gonna happen. Everybody uses a home differently, and you just don't know. Would you would you rather have the warranty was is going to pay for itself? And I do me. tell them. I do tell them this. Look, I'm not gonna put a home warranty on this deal because you're not gonna get the house. Yeah, but, but I sure, recommend you getting one. But make sure you buy. Let's make talk sure. about another part of that. Don't you think that if you have so if you have two buyers presenting their offers to your seller and one is saying they're going to buy their own home warranty versus one saying they're not. Wouldn't you like to know that your buyer is coming to the table saying, I'm going to pay for my own home warranty. So they're not going to bother their sell the seller. You know, that's a great suggestion. You could write on page 14 of the sales agreement. I don't know how many other people feel about it, but you could write on page 14 of the sales agreement they buyer to that. purchase their own yeah. home yeah. warranty, right? Yeah. They don't care. Yeah. Right. But you might, that's a good And that's so for you're representing the seller, that's going to tell your seller, oh, wow. Okay. This, this person's not going to come after me for stuff because they're going to have their own warranty. Yeah. Well, and then also like, if you have a sentimental seller, like Scott was that way when we sold our house because he really didn't want to buy this house, you know? So when the seller came through, he was really pleased to find out they were this and they were that, they were whatever. The yeah. seller might find out, he might say, you know, I'm glad you're going to take care of the house. Yeah. It's just, we have to think of it differently. It's not the same as it used to be. We're not the same environment like you were asking me. We're really not. And we're probably never going to be. Again, it's never going to be the same. So we just have to pivot and readjust and look at it in a different way because the warranty has to stay in. Just like I was talking about the statistics, people are not happy with the way that their home buying experiences went last year and the year before. So we need to change that because your referral is on the line. So if you do a good job now, they're going to refer friends and relatives. And then also when you go back to them in seven, 10 years, when they're ready to, to buy or sell again, they're going to remember that you had their back and you took good care of them and they had a great you know, experience. experience. And even after they had a great experience, you know, it's really true. That's what people remember the experience that they had with you, not what you, you know, not your closing day. Yeah, exactly. Hours not the cut knives. Yeah, not the cut knives. Mm -hmm. One other way, Chris, if I can, so you're, you have like the multi-unit mm -hmm. um, coverage, which that seems an agent that I'm going to deal with. I've never heard of that, but whatever. Um, so I'm going under agreement on a fourplex, which the warranty 1380, the furniture, whatever, or not, like we want this, like before we even do home inspections, like I know that they're old, whatever. And so I wrote it in and then I, when I emailed her, I was like, Hey, give me a call when you get that. And so I said, listen, we want that home warranty for the fourplex America. For it's like thirteen hundred ish dollars that didn't have it in front of me, um, and I was like, "And we want you to cover that." And so, in our offer, we included 
the price of her warranty like with our offer yeah, yeah. because he can afford the difference of two thousand right. dollars in his mortgage payment but two thousand dollars for closing that wasn't was something yeah. so that's how we got the home warranty it was me smart. rather than from the list side writing it in on the yeah. buy side it in for something like we're giving you extra on this is what our yeah, this price is, why. is gonna yeah. be and this it's is what we added in so, you know whatever smart. to get that that was brilliant. Okay. And then she was able to sell it that way to herself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did it work out? Good job. Yeah. You just remind me of something else I want to point out. So like, I feel like we're like brainstorming. We're talking about new ideas, new ways of thinking with home warranty. Here's another one. Um, so on your, so what you just said, what you did, and you worked it into the agreement. Um, if you're on the other side where say you're representing someone and the other agent is wanting to use their home warranty company. They try to say, well, you, they, or you put Specify in, it. Specify yeah. it. Yeah. You have to have it in the contract. And say you didn't, or say they, they say, no, they don't want, they don't want America's preferred. They want to use who they use. If you're representing the buyer, what you need to say to that agent is, listen, I'm the one that's left with my buyer. They need to be able to use me and my network of people. And because we use America's preferred, I have a relationship with my rep. I work very closely with her and we have relationships with certain contractors that we want to use. So we really want America's preferred. People weren't saying that before. I don't know why, but it makes perfect sense. Why would you want your buyer to be stuck with the warranty that, the seller, that the seller paid for and that that rep works with? Right. I mean, maybe they do work with me. I don't know, but if they don't, that's I not always specified. That's not fair. It should just be specified yeah. in the contract. You always yeah. specify but which have, more do you want, Jen? Yeah, yeah but okay. then you'll have it. But again, likewise, you yeah. when you're a listing agent and you get that seller coverage, that's the company that you got. Right, or right, got so that's where they come from. And I'm like, I appreciate that's all well and good. But it's already in the play. Yeah. If it's already in the play, yeah. That's different. Yeah. But if but if they agree to pay for the warrant and then they try to say, oh, well, we use yeah. blah blah blah. Yeah. So no. if it's in the MLS. With including a warranty. Including it. There's no reason for us to put it on there, but I always put it on there. I put I put seller to purchase home warranty for MLS, blah, blah. I put seller to purchase one year home warranty with America's preferred so basic with upgrade costs not to exceed this. Yeah. Yeah. I just, because then they'll go, oh, well, it's just one year. We're going to give you the basic plan. I'm like, no, the contract says max this. Yeah. So we're in there. Here's what we yeah. want. And this with tax is what it comes out to. This is what we yeah. want. I'm like, very specific. Yeah, if you're very specific, then you won't have to. Like yeah, you won't. Just... Yeah, then you don't have to go back and forth. Yeah. It's just very cut and dry. It's, this is what it is. Yeah. So, all right. Any any other? Am I? Were you like we're so much? No. <laughs> no I'm just taking it all <laughs> oh, right. Yeah. Yeah. Instead, of, I mean, I've been working with Keller Williams for a couple of years now. So instead of me doing like a Oh, and then we cover this and we cut. No, I'd rather just have a conversation with you guys. Yeah, and you guys definitely. are all experienced. I think you should talk to Doug as well and maybe consider coming back for one of the PC yeah. classes because the newbies we don't understand like how it all works. Yeah. And I think that there's some, you know, connecting the dots, especially he's actually doing the cut. It's later today for buyers or whatever, but there's a recap in the evening or you could jump in on Zoom or something. But in any case, when it's either recapping the seller process or the buyer process, come to, you know, or at least yeah. step in and teach yeah. them that because they need to understand and walk them through. Here's the website. Here's yeah. how you order how simple it is. So are you, so you're the MCA right now? Yeah. So when new people come on, who, who, do, who like onboards them? Um, that's a, actually a mix between our team leader, Doug and Alana. Okay. Um, or Dopey. Yeah. Okay, because what, what I would say is anytime a new agent comes on, what I do for my, some of my other agencies is anytime a new person comes on, um, send them my way. Okay. And then what I do is I, I can basically do a one-on-one -on -one with them, mm -hmm. set up a Zoom or come in person, and I do an overview of the warranty, how to order it, how to do data collection, et cetera. That way it's not put on anybody here. Mm -hmm. You just hand them off to me and then I take it from there. So like when I onboarded and Jackie was the agent services at the time, she had a checklist and it was like, okay, you met with team leader, you signed all the paperwork, yeah. you meet with whoever, yeah. you go through the command, yeah. you meet with Fauna and, yeah. and go yeah. over and yeah. over. Yeah. Yeah. It should be on the checklist. They should okay. really know the yeah. process. They should know they have the opportunity to go to make that extra money. Yeah. Yeah. They should understand that Fauna is available to them for marketing and branding material. Yeah. Right? 
We were also just like talking around vaguely without confirming anything, like having maybe some of our preferred vendors come to the pet rally. Yeah. You know, yeah. We're, ha we're having no, you, we're having a pet rally March 23rd from two to eight. Um, not that anyone would be expected to say that entire time. But we were just tossing around maybe having some vendors come as like a breakout session. You know, if you need to know about mm -hmm. a warranty, you need to know about obviously Becky would not be attending, but somebody from Elite or you know, yeah, whatever. I probably can come. I actually next week I have my and then we just he just called me this morning. He's flying in from Kentucky. My strategic accounts manager is coming in next week. He'll be here with me Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So you're saying it's Wednesday? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I could probably come later in the afternoon. Um, because some people come by the day, some people not coming by. Like all the people are set to work. Like all the people are set to work till six. They can't get here till six. But then the people with the littles wanted to be able to do something during the day. Yeah. Not me. I get away from my littles anytime. I get to all the time. You know what I'm saying? No, one hundred percent. But Ryan and everything was like, I can't be saying it's all Ryan's fault. Um, Ryan and everything. So, but you know, we can talk to Doug about that. Yeah. Also, kind of his baby. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Thanks, Thanks Bonnie. Schedule a time that we could do a one. Yeah, absolutely. I'll take your card. I don't have one. I'll give you a I'll, pen. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I think my cards are here. I'll give you one of my cards and we can set something up. I can come out in person if you want. I can. Where do you live? Green in, in town. Chris, send it okay. out. It you might be easier to do it on Zoom just because I work and it's kind of. Yeah. I'm kind of. I can do Zoom. I'm, I'm going to the deck to be. Yeah. You know, right. I do Zoom. I have, like I said, I have a bunch of Zoom. I would tomorrow. prefer face to face because that's just better for me. But yeah. We'll just have to see what. Yeah, what it's fine. Looks like. No worries. I can do Zoom. Sometimes it's what I'll do is like to, I'll have to move it tomorrow because you know what I'm doing. But I'll I'll book a bunch of Zooms back to back and I just go in my office and I just. You know, I zoom zoom all day. <laughs> this is our world. You guys do a lot of zooms with clients now. I mean, I <laughs> like it. It's like a love, it's like a love hate relationship, you know. Like we love it but hate it. It, it, it makes so. People, but, but I don't. You don't get the same connection that you can get in person, but you, but it, but it's a nice way. It's an efficient way to spend your time. I've been doing a lot of people moving in from out of state or whatever, and. You know, during the winter, they're not going to drive over. So we've been doing like duo tours. Yeah. You know, where I get them on video and walk, you know, yeah. get them there. And then I make them sign that sight on scene waiver. And then we put an offer in the house they haven't been seen. And then they drive out. Yeah. You know, to do inspections. How's that working for you doing those? Well, I know that was very popular. I, like like I, I think I closed probably six last year, sight and scene. Yeah, I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot. I, I had these. Yeah, these two sisters, they were moving in from out of state and they got referred to me by another KW agent who's their best friend in Savannah. And anyway, they picked the house online and she called me on the phone and she said, this is the house you want. And I said, okay. And so I went over there and we did a duo tour, right? And um, we brought it up and it was the side by side, two units, one sister on the left, one sister on the right. We never met each other until we went to the closing. That is so cool. Isn't that amazing? I've been like doing like videos. I put them into iMovie and then put them in order, like one minute snippets here and there, and then I upload it to it. I just do YouTube and share them. That's what so cool. That's the problem with making videos on your phone. They get too big, and then well, then I delete all down, the footage. Yeah. I delete. All, I can delete all the footage because now it's on YouTube. Yeah, it's and YouTube. I can put it all on my phone, and it's clear. It's clear. Yeah. Good YouTube channel. Yeah. 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 I just make sure it's on this day. You know, just for, I don't know, if I'm chit chatting in the background, I don't want to see anybody on her channel going, she's great. <laughs> Which I do. I'll take videos. Commentary. I may do. Jet, that's not true. It's not true. I can't I tell who's still, if there's people on Zoom. It's just it's Juliet, it's but she, she might go to follow something. All right, that's all I got for you. Thanks, Thank you so much. Any other you. questions? I think that's that's good. Thank you, Tana. Thank you for having me. Good to see you. Good to see you. Is that all right. Some of the Christmas samples. I gotta go first. I gotta take care. Yeah, it was two hours. Okay.